the era of global boiling has arrived. I'm going to have to give props to Antonio Guterres for finally calling a spade a spade. Global boiling is apt, it's evocative, and we need it. The UN, and in fact climatologists and reporters, can be faulted for having left climate change an abstraction for so long, the brunt of which would be felt by people somewhere else, and by pleading for those of us in the first world to care about it. This was a mistake, and we're finally waking up to the reality that global warming is coming for all of us our bottom lines, and our way of life. Perhaps some will realize that they were lied to by economists like Nordhaus. These economists said that even three degrees of temperature rise would barely affect GDP, and it was nothing to worry about. And in fact, their job was to lull us into this exact fate. They succeeded. But when tens of millions in the West are suffering the consequence of smoke inhalation, heat stroke, second or third degree burns, and lose homes and farms to heat, fire, drought, and flood, it is increasingly difficult for the hydrocarbon industry to deny or trivialize the impacts of global warming and CO2. But they are, if anything, well-funded and quite resourceful. And I am sure they will try to project some of this as a net positive. Somehow. Maybe life has become an action-adventure flick. Who the heck knows? Yet, when does it get really real for us? We can probably see ourselves retreating to air-conditioned buildings or pool during the middle of the day, then scurrying about in the morning or evening hours or at night to get our errands done, just like mammals in the age of dinosaurs, or fleeing from a flood. But this really isn't the end of it. Fire, burns, and flood are not new or unfamiliar calamities, but the loss of insurance to recover from them is. This is change exceeding our ability to repair and maybe adapt fast enough. And there are other changes in store for us, much more basic and mundane changes which we should reflect on because they are baked in. Climate change is your last cup of coffee. It is your last chocolate bar. It's your last potato, banana, bowl of rice, and slice of bread. It's your last hamburger, pork chop, roast poultry, and fish. Climate change, for some, is also their last bottle of sriracha, at least for the near future. This is not to say that the world will collapse all at once, but the ecological systems and growing conditions that make many of the things we enjoy or rely on are fading or migrating. Food availability, quality, and nutritional value will decline. Some food growing regions may collapse, and some animals may go extinct. So we should reflect on the fact that for the conceivable future, Even the freaky weather of today is only a waypoint to a constantly changing world. Past experience and today's experience will not be a guidepost for future plans, and each year will bring fresh challenges we have no experience with. 